Hello everyone, welcome to another monthly Patreon voted review. This month's selection is Stella Vanity, so shout out to the patrons for making this video happen. And I have to say, over the course of Electric Underground history, of all of the shmups that I've covered on this channel, of all the games that I have played, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that Stella Vanity has been the most cursed experience when it comes to getting one of these reviews finished. And that's counting Pink Sweets, and that's one hell of a complicated game. But there's no doubt that Stella Vanity takes the crown. This has been one hell of an undertaking. And I don't want to go off on a tangent too much here, but I just have to tell this story because it's just insane. So I've been working on this review for over a month, and I initially was off to a good start. I got lots of gameplay footage going, I had a lot of notes going, I thought, okay, we can get this done in a week or two. Then it turns out, well, I was playing a really early version of the game that I'd had around for a long time. And it's like probably the second alpha version or something. It's like a crazy old version of the game. And all my notes had been basically nullified because there's been 10 years worth of updates since then. So I was like, all right, we basically got to redo the review now. So then I go to try and buy the official release of the game from the website, which takes you to DL site. It's like, okay, I've bought from DL site before. I go to buy the game, turns out. No, no, deal site does not accept PayPal anymore, at least not directly. So then I thought, oh crap. So then I went ahead and tried to buy it with my card, but because it's DL site and I'm in America, they're like, no, sorry. Sorry, buddy, we don't trust this bullshit. So my card kept declining DL site. Then it was saying buy bit cash or some crap. I was like, this is getting ridiculous. So I did some more research. It turns out what you have to do is you got to put the game in your cart and then you got to go through and then you got to buy points for the game, which is DL Site's way of allowing you to use PayPal to buy basically a gift card for DL Site. So then that cost $10 minimum. There was no, you know, smaller increments. So now the game, instead of being $7, basically $10, unless you have other things you buy on DL Site. So you go ahead, you have to buy the points to buy the game. So you got the game. Okay, finally, download the game, launch the game, error code in Japanese. What's it say? I have no idea. So then I got to turn to Discord, get guidance from the wiser Japanese understanding people on Discord. Shout out to Zorak. He stepped in and helped me out and basically really, and I basically realized in order to get rid of this error screen, what you have to do is you have to open up the folder that you downloaded it from and rename it to just Stella Vanity without all the crazy Japanese characters or whatever characters are in there. Okay, rename the game, get rid of the error screen. Okay, we're ready to go. Then it turns out you need to download again from Xerox, shout to him, definitely an appreciated member of the shmup community in my book. You need to download his V-Sync patch, and then you gotta patch the game <laughs> yourself, so you gotta, it's not that hard, but you download the V-Sync patch from Xerox, and then you stick it into the base folder of the game, that way it gets, so you can turn off V-Sync, you go into the options and go by timer rather than by V-Sync. And this cuts down on vsync so you have even less input lag i don't know what the actual input lag of the game is because <laughs> you'll see why but I, when i'm playing it i'm feeling this is one of the most responsive games on the pc that i've played shmup wise i would guess around one or two frames of input lag it's insanely responsive with this patch by xerox so shout outs for him for making that happen it feels fantastic to play so you went ahead okay got the game got the patch got it up and running, got the footage, we're ready to do the review, and then BAM! I get hit with a wicked illness that leaves me basically bedridden for three days, unable to move, unable to really speak. Every time I tried to talk, I'd cough my lungs out, so there goes recording the damn video. I go ahead, I went to the doctor. It wasn't you know flu, instead it was something dark and mysterious, maybe the black plague. The doctor's like, I don't know what you have it's and I was like I know what I have it's like when the guy went to the temple the Egyptian temples and he took out the Egyptian mummies or whatever it is and then he died and people said it's the curse of the mummies I got the curse of Stella vanity I went ahead and bought the game and tried to review it and it came after me this whole experience has been pretty crazy but I think it is sort of important to note not only because it can help guide you through how you actually set up the game and play it but also because it explains a lot of things about why you probably haven't heard of this game before or why it's so underappreciated, underrated, because it's just so hard to get running and to get your hands on, basically, at least compared to most other things these days, like on Steam or whatever. 
And I know people are real big fans of Steam, but I would say even if he could just put this thing on itch or something like that, where he wouldn't even have to pay any extra money, that would be a real nice improvement over DL sites because of their whole stupid PayPal thing they're doing now. But anyway, I do also have to say a little bit of the history of the game, which is pretty interesting. So this game was developed in 2011 for Comicat, which is basically Japan's Comic-Con slash Indie E3 or something. It's hard to exactly find an equivalent, but it advertised itself as the world's biggest convention. I know, isn't it really big for Toho, right? And actually, Choren Sha was developed for Comic Cat years before, in 1995, I believe. And Still Vanity came out in 2011 for Comic Cat, and it since then has had, again, 10 years worth of updates and support and improvement. So this thing is a real force to be reckoned with. Kind of on par with something like a Crimson Clover. I'd still maybe give the edge to Crimson Clover a little bit, but not by much. And the thing about uh, Stella Vanity for people just looking at the footage here, if you just want a nice sort of quick way to describe the game, I would say you take Toho, you take Cave, especially Katsui, and then you stick in Radiant Silver Gun on top of it. And that's going to be kind of a good approximation of what you'll get in the end. This thing's got a lot going on which also makes the review pretty complicated. But let's get started by talking about the basics of how you approach this game. Because just looking at the screen, especially if you play in Tate mode, you'll see there's all these meters and there's all these modes and there's all these different ways and you can play the game, there's shops, there's items. I mean, this thing is the most complicated shmup I have ever seen or tried to review. And I thought, okay, you know, outside of maybe Hellsinker, that okay, if I'm gonna do this review, I'm gonna have to break this up a little bit. So if you want to get real in-depth, nitty-gritty, statistical knowledge of how the scoring system of the game works, how to approach it, all that sort of stuff, I would definitely recommend checking out the Shmup Wiki page, shout out to Shmup Wiki, and also recommend checking out the Stella Vanity run from Shmup Slam 4. You take both of those and you're gonna get a lot of information of how this game works if you want to chase after high score play or understand the scoring system more. What I'm going to talk about is how I approach the game and I try to approach it in the most basic, straightforward method possible. So you're going to want to go to the uh, settings, of course, get everything set up. It does have arcade stick support, which is really cool. But if you're playing on a Brooks board, this is just a shout out for people who have Brooks boards and you go to try and use the directional inputs on the Brooks board and you'll notice, wait a minute, it read my buttons, but it won't read the directional inputs. It's because it doesn't actually read the D-pad inputs, and it reads the arcade stick, or the uh, or analog stick inputs, which is a little bit frustrating, but there is a way to fix this on the Brooks board, which is kind of a fun little thing, where if you hold start, select, and then left, and you hold them for three seconds, what it will do on the Brooks board is it'll swap your uh, arcade stick over from the D-pad, you know, the virtual D-pad, to the virtual analog stick so then it will read your stick so if you're wondering how to make that work with a uh, bricks board that's how you make it work this also works a lot with other shmups indie shmups and stuff anyway so you go ahead get that all set up i recommend if you go into the settings again go by timer i of course play in tate and the developer said he plays in tate as well so i kind of feel like even though most people tend to sort of play this game horizontally because they love all the little meters and everything like that I like to play it in Tate, so all the footage you'll see here is in Tate mode, and the meters are all there, and I think I kind of like this mode better because it simplifies your HUD a lot more to just the more relevant meters, but again, maybe if you're playing for score, having the 8 billion meters on the sides is important, I'm not entirely sure. So you go ahead, and I would say select what's called strict rule mode, rather than story mode, because story mode is like this interesting RPG style thing that uh, I think is kind of like in Silver Gun where you like level up your weapons and everything. It seems really cool, but also seems pretty involved. So if you want to go down that route, again, I would recommend the Shmup Wiki for some guidance. But okay, strict rule mode, which is basically arcade mode. And then you have all the difficulties. And the crazy thing about this game is that there is a lot to choose from when it comes to the difficulty. And the higher ranked difficulty modes are insane. In fact, from what I've heard, Pandemonium mode, the highest difficulty mode, has never been cleared in the entire history of the game. And that's saying something, because you know there's been some determined Japanese player attacking this game. And the little story that I heard is the guy that came the closest actually got a 
double KO on the TLB of Pandemonium Mode, and a double KO is when both you and the boss die on the same frame. So you cleared, but you didn't because you didn't make it past that last frame. And so um, I think what I heard after that is after he got that double KO, he, he like, forget this crap. But the difficulty of this game is insane. And you know it's insane because I tried to convince Jamers to give it a try. And he's like, no, <laughs> I'm not doing it. So if Jamers is not going to do it, you know this thing is a, is a beast when it comes to difficulty. But I will say, compared to the earlier alpha version that I was playing, the more recent release of the game is much more smoothed out when it comes to difficulty. So if you're used to playing cave games like Katsui, DOJ, and that sort of thing, normal mode is about equivalent to those games. It's not more difficult. I'd say it's actually more along the lines of a, like a DDP. So it's not too bad, the normal mode. So when you get into arcade mode and the higher difficulty modes, then it really starts cooking. But uh, yeah, I think you'll all be fine playing normal or easy mode. That's the difficulty selection. And then when it comes to the ship selection, this is interesting. So there's two different ships, kind of like in an early Toho or something like that. But they play like cave ships. So there's the green girl. I can't remember their name. She's basically Reiko from Mushimi Sama. She's got a lower movement speed, a really slow concentrated speed, but she's got a nice wide shot. Still very powerful, still very good. Um, very nicely balanced, I have to say. And then the next ship is the sort of Panzer type. She has the white plasma shots, and she's basically Panzer from Ketsui. Fast movement speed, fairly wide-ish shot, but more, much more narrow than the green girl. And then she just deals a crapload of damage, very fast concentrated speed. And so if you're playing the C-type ships, this is where it gets confusing. So C-type is basically cave-type. That's the best way to think about it, or maybe Chad-type where they're much more simplified, where you have the shot, you have the concentrated shot, you got the bomb, and then you have this sort of Esperade special shot, where you, you know an Esperade where you have a meter and it fills up and then you fire? You basically have that. So it's kind of reminds me a little bit of Esperade there. So that's the C type. And then the S type, and I think that's this is kind of like the main real type ship in the game, which I assume must stand for special or whatever the hell the S stands for. But this ship type is insane. So you got your regular shot, you got your concentrated shot, then you got your bomb, but then you have your Esperade special shot, but you can turn it into auto fire mode, which I definitely recommend by hitting the button twice. Now it goes into auto fire, so it'll just shoot by itself. That way you don't have to worry about that button because you have two other buttons you need to worry about on top of those. So I'd say put that into auto mode. I don't know for scoring if that's what you want to do, but for survival, it seems like the smart choice. And then you have a sword, like you have in Radiant Silver Gun, and this thing's actually really useful. But it has its own little meter, and how and when you charge the meter is still kind of vague to me. But there's the, the sword, and then the weird thing is that it'll lock on to larger enemies at times, like in Ketsui, when they get low enough on health. And then you press it, and you go up and you go into this invulnerable slash, and you'll fly up there and slash them up. Really good against a lot of the higher enemies. Um, getting big screen cancel is really useful. You use it on some smaller bosses and everything. A very, very useful weapon, just like in Radiant Silver Gun. And then you have this hyper mode thing, this hyper button. I think it's called Drifts or something in this game. And you have two different hypers that you activate, and they're independent of one another. So it's not like Crimson Clover where they stack. That's what I thought for a long time. I thought they stack. But no. They're just two different types of hypers, but they were mapped to the same button, I guess, just to save space. So you press the first one, you get Hyper Type 1. I can't remember the names of this game. And then you double press it and you'll get the second type of Hyper. And so what it feels like when you're playing this mode is you're kind of playing it like a cave uh, shmup most of the time. Then you're hammering the sword like you're in Radiant Silver Gun. Then you're also just, at least for me, tapping the Hyper button every now and again to see if you have a Hyper. You can read it on the meters, but just when you're playing, sometimes it's hard to glance down and see if the meter is full or not. So I just find myself type, tapping the hyper buttons all the time and be like, okay, is the hyper ready? Is the hyper ready? I'm sure that's not great for routing, but it comes in handy from time to time during the boss fight. So those are the two different ship types, and I get the feeling that he's done a lot more to balance the C-type ship compared to the earlier versions of the game. But it still feels like of the two types, the S-type is just better than the C-type. just seems to do more damage, have a lot more options. But um, again, it's kind of hard to tell, and I was able to get clears with both types fairly comfortably. So I'd recommend Type C if you want a more straightforward cave style experience, like you're playing Esperate or something. 
And then if you want the full-on Stella Vanity experience, I think Type S is the way to go. And both of, them, both of them are very fun. So those are the ship types. Now let's talk about the gameplay itself. So again, lots of cave influence with Toho. It's kind of, again, the level designs are actually really fantastic. I think a step above a lot of the Toho games that I've played, at least in my opinion, being a big fan of cave. The levels definitely feel much more like a cave game than a Toho game. But the graphics, of course, are more Toho-like. And also the boss fights are more Toho-like for the most part than cave. Though, from time to time, depending, you'll get some bosses that are straight up Toho bosses, and then you'll get some bosses that seem more like large enemy ships that you'll run across in Cave. So it's a really nice mix, actually. And I think if you're a player that's wanting to get into Toho and you're a Cave player, maybe play some Stella Vanity, and that'll kind of be a bridge to Toho. And on the reverse, if you're a Toho player that wants to get into Cave, think Stella Vanity, again, another nice bridge. It's a real strong middle ground between the two that I think. So the gameplay is absolutely fantastic it looks beautiful in a crt by the way for those who play in the crt the glow of the bullets looks great i love how saturated the color is great background the graphics i think are pretty underrated and then the bullet patterns this game really excels with the enemy's design the enemy layout the bullet patterns it has a lot of things that are really familiar if you play a lot of cave games but then it has some stuff that is pretty unique and one enemy i remember is this enemy that sort of hovers in front of you and just shoots at you in your face. But it's uh, it stays a few inches above you on the screen all the time. It just kind of follows you around and shoots you in the face. I thought, what an obnoxious little shit. Then I thought, I need to add that to my game because that's a kind of a cool enemy type. They, I don't think a cave game has something like that where the enemy follows you around like that. Yeah, the level design, just because this is Stella Vanity and it needs to be Stella Vanity, not only does it have lots of different weapon, lots of different stages, but it has like branching paths. So it has kind of like a Super Mario 3 type overworld that you can do, or maybe Death Smiles would be a better example that you can choose from. So get a little Death Smiles influence there. I also like the aesthetics of the characters more than the tone because they're a little more gothy looking. And I like that as opposed to the cutesy style of Toho. So graphics, uh, level design, bullet design this game just delivers on all fronts performance wise it feels fantastic didn't really run into any performance issues after i got xerox patch going so and then of course all the extras are insane so you have all these different stages all these different difficulty selections you have a training mode you have to buy the other stages in training mode that's not too bad though so you'd have the training mode it has a replay mode that's actually how you're seeing the game here because I had to play back the replays because I was playing it on a CRT and it didn't direct capture all that well it would have been like a tiny little box so I went ahead and got it on the monitor and the replay so that has great replay mode it has everything this is a full complete package of a game and for seven dollars that's pretty ridiculous you're gonna probably have to pay ten because of the L site but for ten dollars still perfectly acceptable I absolutely would put it in my shmup essentials category I love this game a lot and I think you'll see me playing it a lot over the coming years because I do think it would be cool to get a higher difficulty mode clear and one last thing on the game design that I definitely wanted to point out that was really unique to this game that I think more shmups in the bullet hell genre can learn from is the auto bomb system this system is actually really cool so the way it works is that it's like DFK where you have all these nice auto bombs and when you get hit you fire off an auto bomb rather than dying, you know, like in most cave shmup. In TFK, it's almost always best to just fly around and not bomb, right? Because the auto bombs, even when they go off, they give you a little bit of a screen clear and they'll damage some enemies. Not as much damage and not as long lasting as a regular bomb, but still, they're pretty powerful. In this game, what it actually does is it just gives you a little screen clear, but it doesn't do anything else on top of that. And I actually really like that system because basically what they do is they nerf the auto bomb as far as damaging things and so it really rewards you for learning how to properly play the stages but it gives you that nice leniency of the auto bomb without feeling like you have to constantly fire off the big bombs all the time but it also rewards you for being able to fire off the big bomb before the stuff hits you especially bosses because you get a big old screen clear and it does a ton of damage so I think that's a really nice middle ground and one of the best auto bomb systems that I've ever seen. And just playing the game for survival is insanely fun. 
and I couldn't recommend the game enough. I know a lot of people are going to be a little bit hesitant to buy it because when it comes to PC shmups, people seem to really gravitate to waiting for it to come on Steam. But from the sound of things, this thing is not coming to Steam anytime soon, so I would say get it now. Um, there's no DRM or anything once you get off the DL site. And I use a program on my computer for all the non-Steam shmups called Playnight, which is really nice. You can actually throw shmup art on here as well, where it launches in a sort of pseudo Steam style library. But again, these just goes to the EXEs. It's just a nice way to organize everything without having a million different EXEs in a folder or whatever you have to do. So if you're wanting to have a sort of solution for that where you can use Battle Traverse and Stella Vanity and all the Tohos and all that sort of stuff that isn't Steam or your itch.io shmups, I think Play Night is a real nice way to do that. And yes, so thanks so much for the patrons for supporting this. I hope you all enjoyed this review. I couldn't recommend Stella Vanity enough. A deeply underappreciated shmup. I do hope that um, this does help raise its awareness because I think more people should absolutely play it. And adios, everyone. So thank you to the $5 patrons, 100, 100, 72 PCT Water, Ukshay Wadker, Dingo, Another Joe, Anthony A, Aaron Solis, Ben, Borgi22, Brian Reboot, Brian Shiver, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Corio, CRC Error, Danielle Savage, Darren Griffin, Delta Tango 6, Disco Star Slayer, DJ420, Praise It, Entropy, Eric H, FCK, Frank Carter, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Geriatric Donmaku, Hausu, Ilya, Kiwi, JLab, JBRPG, Joe Angelo, John Kelly, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, Kiko Man589, Larridge, Malaise, Mark Toms, Maz, Minung, Mechelin, Mitch LY, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron Neo Dagger Games, Oakla Googles, Philip Mason, Portal 63, Radocat, Raul, Real Skeen, Self Aware, Shane Shinsensky, Sketchy Raccoon, SLW, The Boot Rex, The Real Ikuzo, TRM, Sugumo, Twilight EX, Yishi, Plasmo, and Yuskaya. Thanks for watching.